Hey guys, welcome back for another episode of The Student Shootist. It's finally actually cooling down and feeling like, uh, like fall here in Texas. So breaking out some of the fall colors, working in a little bit more neutrals. This is one of my favorite jackets. It's a, an olive Glen Check 3 Roll 2 from Canali. But we are not talking about clothing specifically today. Um, what I'm going to be talking about is how I work my medical gear into my wardrobe. And if you've been following me, specifically if you've seen some of my posts on, uh, on Instagram, and I've talked about it a little bit here as well, you know that really there's kind of one of two different ways that, um, that I prefer to carry my medical gear. So if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and do that. It really helps out the channel. Hopefully by the time this goes live, I will have broken 6,000 subscribers. So fingers crossed there. Thank you everybody for the support. Jumping right into it. So you see a lot of folks that try and carry as much medical gear as possible. Perfectly understandable. Now, I try and keep things as unobtrusive as possible, just like I do with all of my defensive tools. So for me, there are generally a couple of kind of requirements that I have. Number one is if I'm carrying medical, at the very, very least, I'm always carrying a uh, tourniquet that is on the TCCC list. Now, they don't actually approve or authorize any particular tourniquet, so that's, that's a, a very specific point. But what they do is they do say, hey, these are the ones that fit our preferred criteria. They're not a certifying body, but they, they do basically have a list of, hey, these are the ones that we like best. So for me, I prefer the older generation soft T wides because the, uh, the buckle on them is much flatter and lower profile. So it works well with either of my preferred carry methods. Uh, and the reason why I always carry a tourniquet is this is the hardest piece of medical equipment to effectively improvise. So that's why I pretty much insist on it being purpose-built. And since I've got it out, let's go ahead and look at my number one medical carriage method, which is a, a newer addition since I attended the NRA annual meeting. Uh, this is one of the wilderness tactical pouches, and uh, it's designed for a tourniquet and they say a, uh, a magazine as well. I'm really hoping that the quick clot package isn't getting deleted out by the green screen. Anyways, um, this is generally what I'm carrying now most of the time, typically in a back pocket, because again, tourniquet and then some hemostatic gauze, you can't really improvise hemostatic gauze. Now, yes, regular gauze uh, can work as well, but if I can get a clotting agent in addition, that is typically what I prefer to do. And I'll generally carry this in my back left pocket. Now, if for whatever reason, I want to also have chest seals or, uh, or anything else with me, then um, I'll, I'll go to some flavor of, uh, of ankle kit. This one is an Atlas. Um, stay tuned because what I'm actually gonna do is uh, there was a handful of different medic of ankle kits that I was playing with. And so I really want to kind of go into a side by side on those as to why. So if I am going somewhere where I want a slightly more capable toolkit, the ankle kit is what I'll go with. Uh, if I need something that is a bit more minimalist then the wilderness tactical is also generally how I'll go. But the full complement the maximum amount of medical gear that I'll carry is really not much more than this. It's going to be the tourniquet. It's going to be the quick clot and um, maybe like a, a mini compression bandage and a chest seal. Because again, for my purposes, I needed to strike a balance of effective gear while not being appropriately discreet and not interfering with my lifestyle. Now I've got full IFAX in all of the vehicles in our house. I've got one in our kitchen. I've got a dedicated one in my range bag. 
that are uh, a little bit more robust. But um, what tends to be the problem with people working medical gear into a non-duty oriented wardrobe is they're trying to cram a full IFAC into normal street clothes. And something's always got to give. Uh, that's why I, there are some of those ankle kits out there that are just so bulky that um, really the only reason that they exist is because all the waist and pocket space is taken up by duty gear. So um, some of them are a little bit too overbuilt for what I would consider a uh, civilian application. But uh, this is, like I said, this is kind of my preferred. I'd be interested to hear what medical gear do you carry? What's your hierarchy? And um, how have you chosen to carry it? I know that there are some folks that are fond of some different inside the waistband pouches. I know that the Filster Enigma Sport Belt does have some pockets on it that uh, also can be used for that. I want to hear about it down in the comments. So uh, if you do something different, let me know. And if you have any questions on how to carry medical gear, put those down there as well. Like I said, stay tuned for next week because I'm going to be doing a, a little heads up with a few different ankle kits. And aside from that, hope everybody has a fantastic week. Stay dangerous and stay sharp.